This is John here, and I want to take a little break from solving foreclosure problems and get a little meta here and look at uh, something that's different with Lisp and Clojure in that there's a very uniform, simple data structure that you're editing directly, these lists, and in Clojure's case, some vectors and maps and sets that are very similar. And with that uniformity, uh, it comes some extra power that you can use in moving forms around. So I'm using the cursive plugin in IntelliJ, and I'm looking at their default mapping of structural editing commands. And they don't all work for me out of the box because it wants to use the meta key and on Linux with my Windows keyboard I just don't have a meta key so um, I'm gonna skip for now the commands that need the meta key I'll probably go back and remap that to something else but I wanted to just kinda of see what's the minimum work I can do to get the most power and uh, just leaving the, the default key bindings as they are uh, you can already do quite a quite a few things uh, so just to kind of develop the vocabulary of what these things mean, uh, I wanted to go through these commands that do work, uh, such as slurp and barf. I think this one is really the most powerful command, is just, just trying to increase productivity and slurp and barf, and so it's kind of a kind of strange names, but uh, if we look at what slurp means, it basically just means pull the next thing into the current form. So if we go inside this, this vector here, uh, we can do control shift and K is going to slurp forward. Okay, so if we do control shift K, it's, it's slurping in the next number and then we can barf that back out. If we went too far, we can bring that. So it's basically just shifting that, the end of the vector backward and forward. And that can go, you know, all over the place. So that's pretty handy. Uh, instead of having to go hit a bunch of keystrokes to move through here, and get to the right place, I can just suck things in. And then the other thing that's nice is uh, we could have, say, some nested thing, right? And if we start, if we start slurping that in, you know, it slurps that it slurps that whole expression in, and it slurps that form in, I should say. So that's that's pretty handy that we can treat that entire form as as one thing so uh, so that's slurping and barfing so control shift and then J and K so K is sort of move forward and J is move backwards and uh, I'll start using these the structural editing now in the videos and that can I think that'll help me edit text a little bit faster from now on uh, make me more efficient. Alright, so the next one down the list that we can do is is raise and uh, what it's going to do is take the next form the uh, the next form and then overwrite the one above it with that. So if we take say this vector and we do raise uh, then we're just going to have that vector and it's going to overwrite the rest of the list. Okay, we'll do a control apostrophe, then we get that whole, that whole vector there. Uh, I've, and I've got, that looks funny because I have an extra uh, extra parenthesis. I went a little crazy with my slurping and barfing. So when you have this uh, structural editing mode on with cursive, then it sort of makes it hard to delete things. 
because um, it wants to do all the parentheses matching for you. So it's kind of hard to override it to get it back the way it should be. But uh, you can sort of manually do it. Uh, there, okay, so now we have our balance parentheses back. So now when we, so let's look at that raise, raise again with the balance parentheses. Control apostrophe overwrites that whole form. So I don't know why I would want that, but uh, I guess it's good to know about. The next one is splice with alt s. So you alt s. And it basically just says, take the stuff inside the form and move it up. Alt S here. Okay, so I can see that might be useful. Right? If you have something nested that shouldn't be nested, you can do a, an Alt S and, and just bring it into the same level. All right, the next uh, is wrap the next form in stuff. This is obviously quite useful, because uh, if we just did the parenthesis, then we'd have to do that and then say slurp the next thing. But if we do uh, control open parenthesis, then it wraps that next form in the parenthesis. So it saves us from having a slurp one time. And same thing with the brackets. Do a control bracket and we've got that there. Okay, and then also same thing with the curly braces. We can do wrap that as well with the control. Okay, the next one's kind of neat. Closure specific here for cursive is the thread unthread. Uh, so we say if we had this form, we're going to do all this stuff and then add one and two to that. We can do uh, control alt comma, and that would move that into the threading form. So that's pretty nice. And then control alt period is basically the undo for that command. Um, so let's do let's do another thing. We're gonna um, maybe nest some more. So we could do our control shift, and that wraps it. Uh, and let's do a division of six. And now let's go try to thread that again, and we'll see what we get. Control alt thread. Let's see. So let's see if we can thread it all the way. Right, that's exactly exactly what we want. So we can basically, if we have some big nested thing, which is usually how I do stuff, um, is I just start working my way out and working my way out, and then I realize, oh, I should thread all this stuff into in the threading macro and clean it up. Um, Alright, I'll slurp that in there. Control shift. Okay, slurp it in there. So this is something how it would normally look. I would do something, then do something with that result, and then modify that result, modify that result, and then I'll say, oh, that is too nested. It's hard to read. I should have used the threading macro. Now I can just do and thread it out. So 
That looks pretty handy. The threading macro. And then finally, the one that we can do without a meta key is to move a form up and down. So if we kind of move over here to this vector, and we do control shift up, and it starts moving the form around. Of course, if you go too far, you're going to start losing structure. Uh, so I have to slurp it back in there to get it back to the way it was. Okay, so, so we can move things up. They just basically keep going left. Or left or right, or up or down, however you want to look at it. And uh, that is a handy way to move forms around. So instead of working with just text, we can work with forms uh, because we have this very homo iconic syntax. Uh, it's easy for cursive to understand what these blocks are and manipulate them as blocks instead of as just text. So anyway, thank you for watching and hopefully that helped learn, helped, helped to illuminate a little bit about ways to do structural editing or uh, if you're an Emacs, that's probably par edits, uh, increase the productivity and enjoyment a little bit. So thank you for watching.